my lovely people, welcome to Gemma Bee Makes. I'm Gemma and this is my crafty channel where I talk about all the things that I've been making over the past couple of weeks. Today I am coming to you on a very late Tuesday evening. My children are in bread. I look like absolute crap. It is very, very hot here. My hair is doing all sorts of humidity, crazy, curly, fluffy, mum craze. Um, but this is what you get today. We have not, I have not had a wash. I have not put any makeup on. You are just getting authentic Gemma today because that is all I've got. And if I don't do it today, I'm never gonna be able to talk to you guys about what I've been making because my children break up for school tomorrow. They have six weeks off. Um, so I'm not gonna see you guys till September. So we need to talk about things now, otherwise it's just not gonna get done. So you've got crazy haired, unwashed, Unmakeup makeup faced me today. <laughs> you love it, really. Oh, let's talk about all the things I've been making. Because I've been making quite a few bits. So I've got some knitting, some spinning, and some sewing to talk to you about today. I've got a few finished objects. <laughs> I'm diving straight in, aren't I? Okay, um, I am going to dive straight in because... Now, right now, normally is my knitting time or spinning time or just sitting on my ass watching TV time. It's too hot to do anything else at the minute. It's too hot to knit. My tension's crazy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I said, I'm going to jump straight in and talk about a finished object that I've done. I've done quite a few. I've got quite a few pairs of socks. I'm going to start with socks first because they're just here. So, first, that's already on the sock blockers. These are my guilt socks. <laughs> so, the, these socks have been a test net for my friend Esther. I've already told, I'm really sorry, Esther, if you're watching. Um, they were a test knit, so Esther brought out a pattern, the Entrelac sock, Entrelac, 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 you know what I'm saying, I don't know what I'm saying, Entrelac socks, um, and asked uh, for pattern testers, I'm going to say over a year ago, I had both socks all done right up to here, and I'd started the, the Entrelac part of the sock, and I just couldn't do it. And I must have tried about three times, um, on and off, at different points. And so they were just sitting in a bag and they were making me feel really guilty that I hadn't finished these socks. Um, it was getting to the point where I was scared to go in the bag and I've emptied all my box of whips. That's where I'm going with this. I've emptied my box of whips. They are all gone. So I ripped back. And I've just made myself a little pair of shorties. Now I've got to say, so this yarn is a Regia, Regia yarn. It's just a standard sock yarn. I think it's 75% wool and 25% polyamide. I picked this yarn up from Amazon. It was a very, very early stash. Um, I just wanted to try sock yarn. Um, but I've got to say this toe and this heel, which is the pattern that Esther wrote, are the best fitting socks that I've ever made. I was very, very impressed with them. So I think this toe and heel might actually be my new toe and heel because it was such a long time ago that I knit them. I didn't realise how well they fit. Really, really good fit. So finished pair of socks, number one. So like I was saying, I, I've i been going through all my... Um, I've had not a lot of mojo to do any kind of knitting at the minute or any kind of casting on new things. I've lost all kind of inspiration on the knitting side. I don't know if it's because it's warm and I'm just not thinking about the cosy knits. I'm thinking, oh, it's too friggin' hot. Um, but anyway, so I've been going through all my, uh, all my whips, all the bags that were hidden down at the very bottom of the big bucket tote that I've got between um next to the sofa um and I've emptied them all they've all gone if I've been frogged or they're a project that I'm about to show you or I finished them 
How cool is that? I feel better for now on the having getting rid of all those. Anyway, next pair of socks. These are hand spun socks and those of you that have been here for a while will remember this was hand spun sock yarn that I did in, it's a Rambouillet wool by Slothy Creations in the cowboy colourway that was really, really kindly gifted to me by Zoe from Felicity Yarn Studio. Um, it was the leftovers and it was such a nice spin and such a nice wool that I didn't want to have any leftovers. So what I did was I knit a full tube and then I cut it in half. I put on some toes, heels and cuffs and the toes, heels and cuffs are um, yarn that was really deep stash. I, I tell you, I have dove so far into my stash. It's gone to the very depths of the bottom. It's the Yarn Lab UK and it was a mini skein in one of the Buffy colourways. I think it's Sander or Willow. I can't remember, but I thought it went quite nice. So, sock pair number two. And I say number two because yes, there is a third, but they are titty tiny. So these are little socks for James. I haven't blocked them. He has worn them a lot, even though it has been 30 degrees in this country. Uh, it, my child still wanted to wear his very woolly socks with his sandals. <laughs> he don't get his fashion sense from me. Um, so this yarn is West Yorkshire Spinners. Deep stash. I have no idea if it has a colourway name or what. But yeah, I thought they were really, really cute. And um, they are... Did I go straight down? I knit um, a 2x2 two two rib. I think I did 52 stitches. Originally, they were supposed to be for Edward and um, they didn't quite fit Edward. When I put them on his foot, they were just a little bit tight. So they became James socks and I still need to knit Edward with another pair of socks. But yeah, they were cute. They were very quick. I am not going to lie, they were boredom socks. I have got no mojo for knitting at all. I, it's just gone. It's just gone. I've been doing lots of sewing and spinning, but I think just is the heat. It's definitely the heat. I'm zooming through, aren't I? Need to take a breath. I didn't even bring myself a drink. I've just been like, oh, put the kids to bed. Talk to you guys before the sun goes down. <laughs> oh. <sighs> take a big, big deep breath. I can't get over the fact that I'm sat here with my crazy haired self. Still pretty dewy. Anyway, sometimes you just got to say, I don't give a crap. And then actually not give a crap. So my next finished object is something I'm actually really, really happy with. Check this out. Look at this beast. So this is my giant five foot shawl you can't see it goes all the way across that is knit in hand spun yarn from a hilltop cloud in her 14.5 micron merino that is the softest softest wool you will ever ever feel so last time i saw you guys i had four skeins all yep all ready to knit and i wound them up i think the night when I'd finished talking to you um, and I knit myself a crescent shawl. Now the pattern I kind of pinched from uh, the Boho Blush by Andrea Maori. however that's got lots of brioche in it and this is just like the first section of the, the shawl and I just kept going and going. So basically it's um, a crescent shawl, you have a little garter tab it's just knit, 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 both sides, knit on one side, knit on the other side, so you get a garter stitch and you, you increase two stitches on one side and when you come back the other, you increase on four stitches. So, yeah, constantly increasing and it gives you this 
huge big really really wearable um, shawl and it does the cool curly thing I like the curly thing so you can wrap around I'm not I'm not putting it on it's too hot for me to I'm gonna put it on I I hope <laughs> you appreciate how this is so you're ready for this for fit so I took this one down here and then wrap once and wrap again and this little one just tucks under there and it is the comfiest oh my god the warmest little shawl that is going to be my everyday wear for winter how cool is that so it wraps around twice like that for when it's cold but for when you know for when it's really blustery but like an everyday you can't well this is how I wear it anyway this is how I'm going to wear it it's just wrap around ones and then the little curlies just kind of hang and curl and I like it it's so cute I'm super happy with this one I can't sit still oh my god it was totally worth it <laughs> um but yeah I was really happy with how they turned out I kind of think it looks like a sunflower it wasn't intentional the sunflower theme but I think it's uh it's kind of my it's my now it's my sunflower shawl that's what it's always going to be called in my head anyway but yes very very happy with that so all my finished objects all my knitting objects I have been working on a crocheted shawl well a blanket I've been doing the stash of shells shawl <laughs> stash of shells shawl which was um an mcal a mystery crochet along by the crochet project two years ago now I think um I'm not going to show you it this time I showed it last time there's been a little bit of progress but enough not enough to keep getting it out um I'm just going to keep doing panels and every time I finish a panel I'll show um but I have been working on that a little bit my tension with crochet doesn't seem to be affected as much with the heat as the knitting does I don't know what it is I seem to get really really tight knit and um, tight stitches when I'm yeah when it's hot um when I'm knitting so I've t I haven't been knitting as much I've just been crocheting on the blanket which has been enjoyable because it's all my hand spun it's very fun um I have been doing spinning oh my gosh it's been tardy fleece so Tour de Fleece, I have literally not podcast throughout any of Tour de Fleece. I wanted to show you guys everything that I was doing and I have, <laughs> since I have a couple of days a week now where I get to do my crafts and I get to do, um, have some time to myself and I kept saying I'm just going to podcast maybe once every two weeks, I want to be able to sit down, I want to really make a new intro, I would like to learn how to do some soft you know better things on the software and learn how to edit a little bit better I just spat then sorry <laughs> um yeah but since since my time I've got more time all of a sudden it's just been sucked away by other things and I haven't been able to sit down and podcast I haven't been able to um I mean I've been I still have been doing lots and lots of sewing which I'm going to show you in a minute um but that's yeah not as much as I wanted to it's been yeah I really wanted to be able to talk to you guys I just I just haven't had the time hopefully the school holidays now I'm gonna have six weeks off where um I'm we're not we're, I'm not gonna be able to see you guys I'm just not gonna be able to sit down while it's the holidays and we like to spend family time family time is family time so um yeah <laughs> I'll uh but I'll be able to get back to um i'm hoping that in september when the boys go back to school and um, the time that i'll have off will be my time i'm hoping cross fingers anyway tour de fleece was well, not as fun this year as i wanted it to be <laughs> so this year i was i decided i was going to join um, team John Arben, so uh, John Arben Textiles, all you had to do was spin fibre from John Arben. We know that I am the biggest fan, probably not the biggest fan, but I am 
top tier fan of uh, of their fibers and yarns oh, i'm already in squishing <laughs> so as you may have noticed my lovely backdrop today is my giant wall of fiber so the plan was i had 600 grams of undyed merino falkland fiber from john arban and i wanted to dye myself um, a gradient so as you can see it kind of went from brown to gray which was the plan however i did not allot myself enough time and i rushed the end so <laughs> out of all of these only this middle one here and this one here am um, I going to be able to spin this one is felted completely this one is felted completely and this was it that one that one has been a little bit these two which I'm really happy with how they've turned out they went let's have a little look they went here in the middle that one and this one was here I think I was so disappointed. I'll show you what I've got. So I managed to get, I think, I tried to break them up into 100 grams each, which I think is about a four ounce bump. So a four ounce braid. Um, oh no, earthquake, where did you go? Am I still here? Okay. Um, I keep telling you, this is probably not the what an absolute shit show of a podcast this week. I'm sorry. Excuse my swears as well. This is what you get. This is nighttime, Gemma now. <laughs> she does not give a crap. She wants a cup of tea and to sit down. So <laughs> this is probably my favourite one. It, it was my favourite one when I was dyeing them. And it was my favourite one when I was spinning it. And I think, yeah. I just love how it's turned out. Um, I hope you can see that. I mean, it, it kind of just looks grey, but when you look right into it, there's like little olivey fleckles. Fleck, fleckles? That's not a word. Flecks and speckles. Fleckles. Um, yeah, lots of lo lovely little colours that are running through it. And then I think I managed to get 330 metres out of 100 grams. And then the, this one. Um, was more yellowy, orangey. Um, this one turned out really nice. I'm really happy with both of these and actually they've got a really nice contrast to them. So I think they're going to have to be some sort of colour work. I've decided I think I might do some mittens, some nice colour work mittens with these. But out of a, you know, oh sorry, you may have noticed, this middle guy here, this yellow, yellow one, I realised when I'd done all my colours, the, these two were so far apart that I wanted to try and get something that kind of brought them together. So um, it's not from John Arban, but it is still Falkland Merino. So I had some spare upstairs. So I tried to get a colour that kind of m matched and brought them together. However, I hate it. <laughs> so um so my colors that i have my dyes that i was using i was using like a starter kit from color craft um it it already had the modern already in so all you have to do is soak your fiber or your yarn or whatever it is and mix it in with water um you don't need any kind of vinegar or citric acid or anything like that and i was using a pan in the kitchen and I was just, I think I was just too, I was too rushed. But anyway, at the end of it, I'd used all my dyes. And this was like the last of the lemon yellow and a little bit of grey. And that's all I had left. And I was like, oh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And um, I don't like it. <laughs> it's not, it's not me. Do you want it? Do you look at this and think, actually, that's really nice. Would you like it? Send me a message. You can have it. It's yours. I don't like it. So this one was one of my favourite ones. I thought it was ace. I thought the colour was absolutely brilliant. Um, 
but look what I did. It's just, I, I, oh. <laughs> I broke it. Again, was it this one felted? That one felted. Oh. Uh, this one. Um, yeah, so this one was actually another one that turned out okay. So this is still really soft. I don't know how I managed to, well, I do know how I managed to felt some and not the others. I practically boiled them and um, and then cooled them and rinsed them off and thought, oh, they're not quite done enough. I'll throw them back in again and boil them again and put more yarn on top, put more dye on top. And um, yeah, so basically I'm crap and <laughs> just thought I knew better than all the instruction videos that I watch. <laughs> in two gems, true Gemma style. I was like, I know better. I do not know better. I felt it all my fiber. But yeah, this is the last one. This is so. This is the um, the only one left that's that's spinnable. Um, and it's just all right. It's not, again, and I don't think I want to. The whole thing just like really annoyed me. I was really gutted with myself that I managed to felt like so many out of so many. This one was the worst. So this was supposed to be my super chestnut brownie. And I was really kind of happy with how the colours and, and looked and how the effect of the oh, it's just full of covered in threads. But yeah, so I was happy with the colours and how this one turned out. And this one just like <laughs> some of it you think, oh I might be able to run that through a drum card or something. Or I might be able to no rubbish my tour was a fail this year but i did manage to get 330 meters of the gray and i think it's 250 meters of the yellow i'll get myself some nice color work mittens from the whole of the tour it is not the jumper that i was expecting i really wanted a nice gradient jumper and now you know i was expecting the whole um the whole thing to to get so much um time out of it i was like look at all these um all these braids that i've got to spin all gone they're not they're just useless to me now what do you do with all this felted what do I, what do i do with this feltedness just compost heap isn't it going anyway I'm happy with the yarn that I got out of it, but are you ready for this um, coincidence? Look at this. So this is the yarn that um, this one. This is my new yarn. <laughs> uh, super coincidence. I didn't need to do that, did I? So incoming. <laughs> I'm going to show you my new yarn before I even show you my whips today, um, simply because that was such a coincidence. So. Crochet Project are doing a newer mystery crochet along that starts on Friday. Super excited for this one. So all mojo, all knitting mojo is out of the window and crochet is has taken over my life again, which I'm very, very happy about. So this was uh, the, one of the kits that you got. You needed two. It's a vivacious four ply by Fiberspace. This is the colour slate and this is the colour burnished oh very nice and it's a hundred percent superwash merino super duper soft and this i can't remember what the kit was called she did like four different colorways i think three different colorways i don't know i liked this one but yeah that was a super coincidence that um that this one turned out very very similar <laughs> so yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one I can't remember what the the mystery the crochet mystery is called they've usually got a quirky name I think it's like the entwine I'm gonna look it up yeah 
the Entwine Mystery Crochet Along. It looks like it's going to be a fun one and it starts on Friday. So um, all the kits are completely sold out, but if you wanted to take part, um, all that was required was two skeins and with a good contrast. So if you have a little stash dive and see if you can join in with us, it's always fun. I do enjoy it lots. Um, okay, shall I show you what I've actually been knitting? So um, I finished three pairs of boredom socks <laughs> and um, thought I, I actually have to cast on um, something that I'm going to enjoy. So I've been talking about casting on a cardigan for about three years now. I don't have one in my wardrobe whatsoever. So I decided to cast on the Elton by Hohi Locatelli. And this is how far I've got so far. This is the back and it is knit in some superwash merino that I've dyed myself. It looks familiar because it is the same yarn I used to knit my Zweig um, earlier on in the year. So I had three skins, I dyed four, five altogether I think, five skins of the blue and I um, used two for my Zweig, I've got three left for this. And I'm also using some mohair silk from North Shire Yarns I think. Yes, let's have a look. Yes. So um, North is 72% kid mohair and 28% silk and it's in the Dean colourway and that's the North Cheyenne's, I don't know if you've seen her. She's one of my favourite. But yes, I thought they went really, really well together. I have not used mohair before. I've never used it. I've never knit with it before. I've, I, I quite like it. it. I don't find it itchy yet. It's not on my face. I mean, I haven't worn it yet, so I don't know. <laughs> but I don't, doing this, it's not itchy. So um, I have high hopes. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this is how far I've got. Not very far at all. Not very far at all. I, like I said, I cannot knit when it's hot. My tension is going crazy and I really can't knit with the mohair when it's hot because um, it's just sticky. I'm, I'm just gross. Guys, I'm so gross. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm disgusting tonight. But... Um, yeah i like it i wasn't sure how it'd work if you're knitting with like a, a fingering weight yarn and a lace weight yarn but yeah you just get like this nice airy feel to it i'm really looking forward to actually having the cardigan um like it's it looks like it's going to be a nice um springtime autumny kind of lightweight cardigan i really need one of those in my life and i have been keeping that in my fiber fox bag i love this bag okay project number one and project number two is kept in one of my own handmade prototypes <laughs> it didn't quite work out i tried to do like a little peekaboo window it didn't work out so this this sock this yarn so i cast on a pair of socks let me see if I can, um, oh, I should have straightened all this out before I started talking to you guys, shouldn't I? These are the Galliano socks by Tracy Miller of the Grocery Girls. Tracy from Grocery Girls. And this yarn is from Lucy Locketland. Now, originally, originally, I had this yarn to make the toadstool socks, what, what were these called? I tried to do them twice. The magic toadstool socks. So I bought a kit, it came with a pattern and it came with this amazing green and then a red and then a white to make the colourwork toadstools. I tried to do the toadstools three times 
and could not get them on my feet. The tension on the colour work just around the ankle, I just couldn't get it right. I knit them once and realised they were too tight so I tried again and they were still too tight and I thought maybe they'd fit my mum but they didn't. And then I thought right, all back out again, really really pay attention to the floats, make sure there's lots of stretch to them and I still, they still didn't fit. But this yarn, this green, is absolutely luscious. I just, I really, really love this yarn. I think it's lovely. So I already had two cuffs already made because I was knitting them two at a time. I'd done two sets of, of toad stools. I think I'd done one and gone, nope, start again. And I just took it off and I started again. So actually I had two cuffs ready and like a few rows which is where you can see I left it and then thought, well, I'll just start the, the stitch pattern for the Galliano socks. I, in hindsight, I really should have ripped back those last five rows, but in my head, I was like, oh, it won't, it won't matter. It kind of just looks a little bit of a mess. But anyway, nobody ever is ever going to notice apart from me and you. So I left it as it is, but yeah, this is a really nice pattern. This was it's really simple. I managed to memorise um, that it's an eight row repeat for the lace and, it, and I, it was really, I managed to memorise it within the first row so that was really really good. I'm, I think I'm about ready to, for, a, for a heel turn so that is why I've stopped. Um, but yeah they're really nice and not a boredom sock because it's actually got a little bit of interest and the yarn's lovely so I was quite happy with this uh, project. So yeah, two projects that I know that, one that I'm happy with the yarn, the other one that I really want the finished object. So two projects at the minute and then a crochet project. Mystery crochet starting on Friday. Job's good in. That's everything. That's all my uh, nitty yarny crafts. I have been doing lots of sewing. So the last time I spoke to you guys, I had designed myself a needle case um, for myself to keep all of my circular knitting needles in and all of my crochet hooks so I could keep everything in the same place. And I decided I was going to make four more just for friends and family um, and whoever, it, I was going to pop them in an Etsy shop to see if you finished. I really, really enjoyed making them. So I'll show you. I have... Um, I've sold them. <laughs> I'm going to show you them, but they've gone, I'm afraid. I, um, how cool are these? So I really, really enjoyed picking out the fabrics for these. I thought they went really, really well. So this is a purpley fan and feather with um, the pinky zip, mauve zip on the back. I went with purple press studs on this one. And inside is all the greens and blues and turquoises all together so little poppers for and the pleat, pleated uh, pockets and a crochet hook place and a space for um, circular knitting needles this is where the circulars go and there's pockets on either side I was yeah I was super happy with them and the girls that I've made them for really like them um, Mel um, of Mel Brown crafting podcast has got one although she got the prototype I'm still sorry about that Mel I sent her the wrong one she loves me and loves it anyway so I'm happy about that um yeah the green one turned out really well so the green is just the opposite so that one has got the purple inside in fact I think this one's still available oh, I can't remember um so I've sold a few um I've gifted a few and then I went on a crazy fabric buying binge <laughs> um, because I, I wanted to be able to put them in an Etsy shop. I want um, if you guys, because I got a few messages on Instagram, people were interested in them. So I have been making some more so I can sell them to you guys if you want to buy them and um, check out these. So this is my stack of whips. So as you can see, I have got this awesome, I think it's Lewis and Irene fabric. And I've got four of the green ones and I've got two of the pink. 
Now, they're all very, very similar inside. Oh, they're really, they really are in a state of, um, of undone. <laughs> they are undone. But I'll see if I can get it without it all falling out because I've, I've kind of pinned it all in place. Um, so they're lots of different greens and pinks on the inside. Yeah, really, really not finished, but not far off being doing. So they they do take a very long time to make, but it's very enjoyable. Um, if you, you, you guys know me by now, I am quite, I, I wouldn't call it a perfectionist because I'm not a perfectionist. I, I, if it's not perfect, it doesn't bother me. If, if I get, you know, it, and I, I don't, um, I strive for perfection, but if I don't get it in, I'm not fussed. Do you get what I mean? I'm not bothered. However, I really, really enjoy the precision of like, cutting, uh, finding fabrics to start with. I, I love like finding colours that go together and getting that really nice colour match. And I like the precision of uh, cutting. I like it when everything's square and on point. And I've really enjoyed like stitching. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there will be some needle cases handmade by me in my Etsy shop very, very soon. I'm not going to say a date because I don't know when I'm going to get them finished now. Like tomorrow is the last day that I'll get to do any kind of sewing um, and it's only for two hours in the morning and then that's it. It's six weeks of holidays with the boys and I'm probably not going to get to it until September. However, I've really enjoyed doing it and the thought of putting them away until September is like, mm. I really want to get them finished. I've enjoyed doing them. So I am going to put them in my Etsy shop, I think, as um, I'm going to have a little look, but I'm going to list them um, on a pre-order because they're so, so nearly finished. That I'm actually going to list them as a pre-order. And as they're finished, if you would like one, you can, you're very welcome to message me or look on Etsy. I'm going to leave a link down below um yeah click on the link if it's there and it's available it's yours if you want to message me um because you can't be bothered waiting for etsy i would happily go through uh, paypal either you can email me at gemma b makes at gmail.com um, i'll leave a link down below or you can message me instant message on instagram and that's gemma b makes on instagram um yeah i've really 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 enjoyed doing those precision is key i'm very enjoying it and then oh so with the scraps from the um other needle cases i've been making these cute little scissor pouches a little pair of scissors in it because these are my favorite things to have in my project bags i like to have a little pair of scissors and then i like to put my tapestry needle my sewing in needle just in there just pop it through in each bag and i've got a few of those as well so i'm going to put them again with my Etsy shop. So they were the fabrics that I picked for myself and then my friend Debbie, oh, wait a minute I'm just gonna check that I'm not talking to my, we're good I'm still here. <laughs> uh, yeah it's been known to cut off, I really didn't want it to cut off halfway through, I don't know how long I've been talking for. Anyway so my really good friend Debbie from my spinners group wanted to buy um, one of the needle cases from me and we were, as she said originally, she was going to pick the green and then I got these colours in I said actually I think these are more your colours, would you like one of these? Yes. And then when we met up for spinning she had a big pile of fabrics and said Gemma would you like them? because they were her mother-in-laws and her mother-in-law really sadly passed away last year. And she was kind of hoping that I would make one of the needle cases for her in this fabric. So I don't think she's ever gonna use it, but the thought of just having a little memento from her mum-in-law was really nice. 
Now these fabrics, I'm not kidding, are the best <laughs> fabric. It is like vintage 70s, like 60s, 70s fabric. The colours are amazing. I quite definitely remember my grandma having a set of curtains in these exact colours. Um, so I made a needle case for Debbie in her mother-in-law's fabrics. Now Debbie, if you don't want to see this um, and you want it to be a surprise, then, then I'll see you next time. <laughs> but are you ready? I, want to, I just want to show everybody because this is my favourite one so far. But look at this fabric. How cool is this? It's like a super 70s fabric. So we've got like brown polka dots in there. I managed to find this really cool orange zip that matched and I went for the brown poppers. I thought it all matched. So here we Look at that fabric. How cool are they? They're so amazing. Absolutely love them. And I'll tell you, um, using an orange, using this check, the stitching, I, I just, I've just managed. Do you know when you're just so super, I'm super proud of this. I'm really, really happy with it. It's definitely my favourite one that I've made so far. I'm not sure if any if this is anybody else's taste, but I absolutely love this fabric. I think it's amazing. Now, I'm not sure if I am going to make any more of this needle case. I think this needs to be special for Debbie. It's Debbie's. So it's going to be one of a kind, her mum-in-law, one of a kind. However, I think it's going to make the best project bags. I just think it's ace. It's so funky. Absolutely love it. It's definitely my grandma's curtains. Also, one of those sofas that had like the little tassels that went all the way around the bottom and on the fringe of each corner of the cushions. <laughs> yep, memories. But yeah, I was, I was, I was so happy with that. I was so happy with how it it turned out. So that, but that's what I've been spending my time doing. I've been knitting lots. No, well, I've been knitting lots of boredom socks and then eventually casting on two projects that I've enjoyed. <laughs> um, I've been crocheting and I've just been doing lots and lots of sewing and like precision cutting and ironing, getting those pleats. I don't know what it is that's so enjoyable about it. I just really enjoy it. I'm a big giant geek. I can't help it. And I know you are too. You are. Just admit it. Um, I'm sure there was lots and lots that I wanted to talk about. Oh, tour de fleece. So, going back to my ultimate tour de fleece, I managed to get, eventually, what did I say? 330, 250, what's that? 580 meters, 580 meters out of 200 grams, eight ounce. I was uh, team John Alban Easters. I was also in a little tiny competition against Naomi and Zoe, who are Felicity Yarn Studio and uh, the Yarn Curator. Swap those around. Um, yeah, Zoe totally kicked our ass. Naomi is just as bad as I am. <laughs> I think I didn't spin every single day. I missed out about two or three days throughout the tour and then I, I didn't do the last three or four days either. I was just so good with my felty, felty fibre. I think if all my fibre would have worked out, I would have been so enthusiastic about spinning and I would have kicked you girls' butts. But it sucked, so I sucked. <laughs> okay, guys, I am definitely, definitely losing the light now. Um, it has been really, really nice to have a super chill talk to you. My neighbours are now coming back from the pub. I'm hobbling down the street with a takeaway in his hand. <laughs> he totally just heard me say that. <laughs> Uh, I don't care. He knows. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave it on that very awkward note. Uh, it's been really, really nice to um, to chat with you in my scruffy mum state. 
I cannot believe I actually recorded this with my hair as crazy as it is. No makeup and super shine. Although I finally cooled down a little bit. It's quite nice now. Whew. Sort of. <laughs> anyway guys, it's been really nice. I will see you all in September. See you soon. Bye.